in his presence, David did. I surrender all. At this time, those of you that are able, would you please stand for our pulpit scripture? Our pulpit scripture today is coming from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 17 through 20. Again, Luke chapter 10, verses 17 through 20. After we have our scripture reading, we're going to ask if you would please remain standing for our mouth prayer as well as our congregational song. Beginning at verse 17. And the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Verse 20, Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. The word of God for the people of God. Please remain standing.
show us in a great day to visit a great church. And as always, we start our day with devotion and praise, followed by a day of worship experiences that certainly enlighten all of us and change our lives for the better. And finally, our officers and members will, at the end of the service today, rededicate ourselves to another year of passionate service to God and to this community. Amen? Amen. So we thank you for choosing Mount Carmel as your place of worship. And as you leave us today, rest assured that Mount Carmel is a church where you're always welcome. For we say, please come again. Thank you so much, and God bless you. God bless you. We thank you so much for that welcome, and we are thankful for each and every one of you that are sharing with us on today. I just want to take this moment now uh, to introduce to some and present to others uh, one of our guests that's sharing with us on today. Uh, he's a friend of mine. He's a co-worker of mine. He's a co-neighbor of mine. Uh, he's a hunger, fellow hunger striker as well. And, uh, and I am thankful that I did not, he did not ask if he could come. I asked him if he would come. And I know that he has, and he made time on his schedule to come and share with us. And I know it's a busy schedule. And I know he's not going to be here for the entire service. But I know that up front. It's not like he's one of those that asked to come and then got to go. Uh, he has a number of busy things to do on this day. But I am thankful that when I called him, he responded uh, immediately. And uh, I look forward to that kind of call and response in the future. At this time, I want to present to you one of our Chicago's candidate for mayor, Brandon Johnson. Well, well, well that's a, a very, very generous applause. When I was teaching in the Chicago Public Schools, that's just how my students would greet me every single day. I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> Forgive me, Jesus. <laughs> so good to be with you all, Mark Carmel. What a place to not just come and worship, but a place where the movement for justice is advanced. Yeah. So I thank you, uh, Reverend Jones, for your leadership and your commitment. There is not another pastor in the city of Chicago yeah. that loves the people of God. Like So I've had the privilege of serving as Cook County Commissioner of the First District, representing the west side of Chicago and the western suburbs. And I'm grateful to have served in that capacity and have been reelected. But really, the best job that I've ever had is that of a public school teacher, teaching seventh and eighth graders in Cabrini Green, USA. It looks like I got a witness in here this morning. Good, well done, good and faithful servant, right? But teaching in Cabrini Green is really where my politics begin to, to mature. Because teaching in the Chicago Public Schools, and particularly in Cabrini Green, it really captures the essence of the city of Chicago. Because from the back windows of my students, they could see and hear and practically touch one of the wealthiest neighborhoods in the entire city. But out of their front windows, though, they had bulldozers staring them down to destroy public housing. Y'all know what that's like over here, too. And so for too long in this city, families wake up every single day and they chase down this economy that's behind them while everything in front of, front of them is crumbling. It shouldn't be that way. No one should be too poor to live in one of the richest cities in one of the wealthiest countries at the richest time in the history of the world. And that's why I'm running for Mayor Chicago. So I finally put an end to this tale of two cities and usher in a better, stronger, safer Chicago. And we can do that, and we can do that together. It was in this church where we began to organize and fight back against Ron's privatization scheme that shut down public schools and fired black educators. So it was right here in this church where we, where we began to organize and push back against that. It was in this church that we called for an elected representative of the school board, and we did that through a movement, and we did it together. 
That's why I'm confident that the city of Chicago's best days are ahead with the right leadership. And when people say that politics is not personal, they're lying to you. That's what the wealthy say to poor people the moment they take stuff away from us. Now, no one is like to grow up in a home. A father and mother raised all of us. It was 10 of us with one bathroom. All right, now. So I learned to negotiate early in life, <laughs> especially with sisters. And my wife and I will be celebrating 25 years, June 28th. And um, thank you very much. And we're going to have the biggest surprise wedding anniversary that the mayor of Chicago can ever throw. So don't tell me. But we're raising our family on the west side of Chicago, and I'll close with this. We love the Austin neighborhood, but it is one of the most violent neighborhoods in the entire city of Chicago. <coughs> We've had to change a window for one of the bullets that have come through our home. We've had to cover our children countless times as gunshots ring right outside our front door. And when my oldest son of three, I have an 8-year-old, a 10-year-old, and my 15-year-old, when my 15-year-old rides his bike, I fear for his life. We should be celebrating in, in a year when he gets his driver's license, but instead I worry about him. And what I want for my family, I want for every single family in the city of Chicago. And that's why as Cook County Commissioner, we've invested $75 million into violence prevention. We've invested $42 million in universal basic income where 55% of the recipients are black women and brown women. It's why we eliminated up to $1 billion of debt because those of us who had to rely upon the Fantas Clinic and the Fantas Clinic Saints in the building today. When you stand in that line to see a doctor, you gotta come back later to get your prescription filled. We invested, invested hundreds of millions of dollars into affordable housing. And when I am the mayor of the city of Chicago, you're going to elect someone who doesn't just love the city of Chicago. We need someone who loves people. And that's why I'm coming on you all on February 28th. Vote for Brandon Johnson because I believe a better, stronger, safer city is in front of us if we actually build our movement together. Thank you again, Reverend Jones, my Carmel Pastor. Love on coming to your church. In the name of Watching over me, I've got an angel watching over me.
off to a period. Just going to all this space. But you say, uh uh, I ain't giving up this time. <laughs>
want you to stand, please. Those of you that have the business, would you stand? As you can see, it is a responsible reading. We've done this a time or two. I charge that you accept your office and position of leadership with godliness, loyalty, devotion, and an understanding of your duties. Will you give yourselves to God as you lead the members in ministry, study, ministry action, and fellowship? Will you encourage and support one another as officers and leaders at every level of leadership and membership?
privilege of being in worship one more time. Amen. Amen. I, the older I get, the more I love that old song. One more time. One more time. Glad to be in the service. One more time.
privilege it is to be able to come to the house of prayer and to worship God and to find your favorite seat and, and sit down and, and just worship him as you feel. For, for almost three years, we didn't have that privilege. It is a privilege. I mean, even if you're online, you can't get out. You're shut in at home. Uh, we, have, we have pivoted in the church post-pandemic so that we can send the worship to where you are. And so instead of you coming to God's house, we can send God's house to your house. It is a privilege even to sit on the side of the bed and worship God in your house. Amen. Amen. My wife told me a few weeks ago, she said, you know, baby, I miss uh, uh, being sheltered in place. Okay. Most folks say I miss being able to come to church. She said, I miss being sheltered in place. And I said, what? what why is that? She said, because you were able uh, to record the services and then you came home and you sat in the kitchen and we had breakfast and had church together. Listen, that was a privilege for me to have breakfast with my wife every Sunday morning for two and a half years almost. It's a great privilege. Christ grants us many privileges in life. But I want to simply tell you today that the greatest privilege that he gives to us is the privilege of being saved by grace. Amen. Amen. Brother Randy pushed me already. Being saved by grace. Everything that the disciples did grew out of their relationship with Christ. It, it was then and it is still today basic to everything that we do, especially if you are a leader. Can I just throw this in parenthetically? If if your relationship with Christ is not right, you're not going to treat other folk right. If our relationship with Christ is not solid, our leadership will be shaky. Can you hear him saying to his own disciples, apart from me, you can do nothing. And so as we develop a closer relationship with Christ, he grants us certain privileges. There was a, a very popular television commercial that ran for years that, that was extolling the virtue of a particular credit card. And, and their byline was at the end of, the, of that commercial, they, they closed that commercial out always by saying, membership has its privileges. Amen. In other words, they, they really was trying to say that you need our car over everybody else's car because when you have our car, you have privileges. And I've discovered, Pastor Jones, that too often members uh, seek privileges when the Lord has already granted them. You remember James and John? They had been chosen by Jesus to be apostles. And yet, as they walked beside him, they said, Master, when you get to your kingdom, give us this special privilege. Let one of us sit on the left-hand side 
and let the other one sit on the right hand side. God has already given us privileges. The, 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 the old country church used to say, you don't have to worry about the right hand and the left hand. You, you'd always hear them saying, when, where some never. Amen. Where, wherever I am. I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, it's not good English. They say, I'm not choosing. But where some never I am, I'm happy to be in the crowd. God grants privileges to us. The Lord has given us. Can I tell you in this text that, that it really reminds me that the first privilege that God gives to us, and I want you to get this as leaders, that, that the very first privilege he grants us is the privilege of service. When it's the privilege of service. It, it, it's indeed a privilege to be called, to be selected into the service of the Lord. The ministry of proclamation when you read the Bible, the New Testament, you'll discover that the ministry of proclamation of the gospel was not uh, limited to the twelve. Uh, Jesus picked twelve disciples whom he later named apostles. And if you ever read the New Testament, you'll discover that he sent them to the, the, to the tribes of Israel. He sent them to the people that he already knew. But in the Gospel of Luke, when you come to this text in the 10th chapter, you'll discover that not 12, but Jesus chose 70 others. And he sent them out to the cities to which he had not yet come. They were, in fact, his advanced people. They were his prep people. They, 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 they made sure that the way was straight when Jesus got there before he got there. You've been called into leadership in the church. You, you've been called as a prep man or a prep woman. It, it is your job to make sure that everything is, play, is in place for the promulgation and the spread of the gospel. The Lord needs some advanced people. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The Lord needs some, some prep people, especially in this post-pandemic time when folk are got, have gotten comfortable at home and don't want to come. And we, they, they need, we need some people who are willing to advance the cause of Christ and say, you need to come on back. Yeah. Your answers to life's questions are not found uh, on the living room sofa, that they're found in the house of God. The Lord sends prep people out. He sends us out as, as harvesters in a field that is ready but neglected. I, I really wish you'd read it. Jesus said, the harvest is ripe. It is ready to harvest, but the laborers are few. I grew up on a farm, so I understand that, that the only way that the harvest doesn't get picked is, is because the farmer has neglected to make sure he's got the crew to bring it in. And so Jesus calls us as his special advanced people to bring the harvest of souls into the kingdom of heaven. And he expects us to use every single resource that he has granted us. I, I see some new stuff since I was last in Mount Carmel. I see some screens up on the wall. Amen. TVs on the side. And that, what that really tells me is that somebody in here is trying to use every single resource that you have at your disposal to advance the kingdom of God sends us out as harvesters. He sends us as lambs among wolves. He sends us as laborers to do the work of Christ, to bring to the world the blessing of God. It is a privilege, my friends, to be called into the service 
of the Lord. I, I, I want to give you this disclaimer because when I was when I was in, in high school, I didn't take gym. In high school, I took ROTC for four years, <clears throat> and and I ended up when I graduated being uh, uh, the, the the top uh, cadet in the city. Amen. Uh, and set a record for a drill in the city of Chicago that I think is still standing. Uh, and, and so when I when I when I got ready to graduate, they they said, "Well, now if you." If you just go into the service now, we will we will make you a sergeant without ever having before. Don't worry about college. If you do that, we'll put you in ROTC uh, in, in, uh, and we'll put you in officers training. But we'll make you a sergeant as soon as you go into the service, and we'll pay for your college. And, and I said, well, okay, well, when I get finished, where, where are you going to deploy me? They said, the first place we're going to send you is Vietnam. I said, no, thank you. <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to volunteer for that service. No. Now, that wasn't a privilege for me. They thought it was, but it wasn't a privilege for me. But can I just tell you today that it is a privilege to be called into the service of the Lord. Amen. Let me tell you a second. I'm going to hurry on and get through this. God not only grants us the privilege of service, but, but here, is, here is what I think a lot of servants miss. Because too many servants get frustrated in trying to lead folk and to do the work of the church. Because everybody that's in your group doesn't have your spirit. Amen. Amen. And, and sometimes as you try to sail the, the ship uh, of your organization forward, you run into contrary winds inside of <laughs> but, but can I just tell you that this text suggests to me that when God grants you the privilege of service, he also grants you the privilege of success. It is right here in the text. It's right here in the text. It says that when he sent the 70 out and, 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 and they went and did ministry and outreach and they all began to make their way back to Jesus. When you read the text, it says they were overjoyed with their experience. They, they came back shouting and, and, and praising God for what they had been able to do. They, they came back saying the sick were healed. Uh, the gospel had been preached. And, 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 and they said to Jesus, even the devils were subject unto us. Lord, if we could just get some devils in the church subject to the Lord. He said, even the devils, they said, even the devils were subject unto us. And Jesus got himself got caught up in the euphoria of the testimony of his own disciples. And he said, I saw Satan myself fall down from heaven like lightning. God granted them the privilege of success. He said, I, I, he said listen, I'm giving you, and, 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 and I want you to get this because it still holds true for every disciple of Christ. He said, I'm giving you power to tread on scorpions and serpents. I'm giving you power over the enemy. Jones, I, I've got a sneaking suspicion <laughs> that most folks would volunteer for service if they knew they were guaranteed success. Amen. Amen. Listen, listen, if that recruiter had told me you can go to Vietnam and come back without a bullet wound, I may have taken him up on his offer. Amen. 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 But 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 most of us would do it if we were guaranteed success. As workers for God, we are enlisted to reproduce after our own kind. And God says, will have success. Those, uh, your lives, our lives, are living
living testimonies of what God has already done and it tells others that if he did it for you, he, he is able to do it for them. In other words, every victory that you have becomes a testimony that God grants victories to other folks. Every sickness you overcome is a reminder that the God we serve is a healer. Every, every closed door you open lets us know that God is a way maker. It is a testimony to somebody else that if you trust and never doubt, surely he will bring you out. God brings us to a standard of life by his grace whereby we are able to reproduce other folks who have the same kind of faith that we have developed in our sojourn with God. As we walk with him, he brings us closer to him. It's good to know, my friends, that we've been granted privilege to serve. It's, it's even better to know that he has granted us the privilege of success. Amen. Listen, I've done some stuff as a pastor that, that when I, when I, even when I say, can I, listen, don't tell my church I said this. Y'all put your hand over your head. But even when I said the Lord told me to do it, I wasn't always certain that it was going to work out. Amen. Amen. And, and, and really, that had nothing to do with the Lord. It was my own faith. But when, when you know that God will give you success, particularly when in your intrepidation he takes you through it anyway, then you get up on the other side and so then you start to laugh. I know the Lord can make a way. So it's good to know that we have been granted the privilege of success. When, you, when he receives you, listen, this is what he told his disciples when he said, he said, listen, whoever receives you, receives me. And whoever rejects you, rejects me. Amen. And, and so you've got, you're standing not on your own authority, but you are standing on the authority granted by God. And so you have been given the privilege of success. I'm almost in my seat. But, 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 God says, I picked you out. Amen. Listen, if most of us were honest with ourselves, we really would stand in the mirror and say, God, there really ain't nothing special about me that would cause you to pick me out to lead anybody anywhere. Amen. Amen. I thought there were three more preachers behind me who would say, Nothing special about about Alan Love that would say he ought to leave this or leave that, but somehow God not only blessed me with the privilege to serve, but He blessed me with success in that service. I'm not even going to go through the litany of all the stuff that God has done in spite of me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I, I thought I was doing some stuff, but God said, "Come here." Let, let me show you how I can really work it out on your can I just testify just one thing? And then I get out and look at it and say, come on, baby, you know you got to go. Listen, listen, can I tell you, we were trying to do a handicapped accessibility program at our little church. And it was going to cost two and a half million dollars. And we were wondering how we were going to get it paid for, how we were going to get it done. And, and it looked like it came up to the point where we could do that. And while we were, were wondering how to get it done, God dropped in another property. And, and, and the property we have is, is you know, we can, you can put my whole church right here in the sanctuary. And, and, and the property is eight and a half acres. And the church is 37,000 square feet. And two school buildings with 8,000 square feet. And, and, and uh, 200 car parking lot. And a basketball court. And baseball down there. And a big about 
book of life will be caught up together in the air to meet him. And there shall we ever be with the Lord. You see what I tell you this right Officers, you've been granted the privilege to serve. Pray that God grants you the privilege of success. But beyond all of that, make sure that you have the privilege of salvation. Fall yourself. I discovered Dr. Jones. I'm, I'm really through preaching. I discovered post-pandemic that there's a lot of folk in church who went out, who ain't coming back. And, and for many of them who are not coming back, there's some who can't do it, some who are afraid of the virus, some, you know, who got comfortable. But then there's also some who never were really in the church. And, and, and so I, I'm discovering that, that the church has to go back to basics, that we, we've got to evangelize some of the folk that we had as members, but they weren't disciples. And so our greatest privilege is not our service. It's not our success. Our greatest privilege is our salvation.
as our pastor Meredith prepares himself to give our altar call. There's certainly a few names that we want to remember in prayer. Our own Reverend Nina Phillips, Rosalind Thompson, Sarah Ward, Anthony Bohannon, Ronald Youngblood, our own Pastor Meredith and Lady Emeritus, Reverend and Sister Shirley Felker, Dorian Minor, Roosevelt Johnson, Denise Frazier, Takora Steele, Brother Michael Vernardo, John Stevenson and family, James Robinson, Defer Malik, our Deacon Chair Milton Taylor, Alton and Terry Logan, Sister Margie Collins, Annie Gilbert, Terrell Nixon and family, Dr. Nicole Williams, who's on a medical mission in Kenya, Myla Kantu, let's continue to keep the Irby family in our prayers, Brother Ronald Youngblood, Deacon Warren Irby, Ella Moss, Rexy Taylor, Dorothy Jackson, the family of Whitney Ware, let's continue to keep Sister Alice Jones and her family in prayer, yeah. Sister Sarah Rice, Lance Ferguson, Robert Davis, Francine Crockett, Joe Ross, Deacon Andre Dennis, Sister Renee Gillison's mother, who was rushed to the ICU at South Shore, and Sister Joyce Logan and the family. Let's continue to keep these names that we have listed in prayer as well as those who you may know as our Pastor Marius comes. Will you go with me? as we go to the altar of sacrifice and shame. Our souls have been made glad by the preaching of your word. We know that we're going to be successful because our name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. We want to Give to those for the Lord, the sick list is long. And there are those who've been on it a long time. And their, their patience may have been shortened. And they may be somewhat undecided as to where they stand. But I come today to tell you that the message has assured us that if we'll bring it to the altar of the Lord, he'll give us the victory over whatever the condition may be. We thank you today for our coming together. For we realize that you had your angel of mercy to touch us this morning, to let us get up and put our clothes on, and then come through the highway and the expressway and make our way to the house of prayer. Oh, how grateful we are because we heard the singing of Zion's song. But most of all, we heard the assurance of the preaching of the gospel. We want to tell you that whatever your condition is, turn it over to the Lord. Bring it to the altar and he will I declare he will make everything all right. Thank you today. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for the preacher. And thank you for all. Bless our church and bless our pastor. Bless his wife and bless our entire congregation. We need you today.
Amen. At this time, we thank God. Thank you, Dr. Felker. At this time, we're going to ask our ushers to prepare to contribute cheerfully to the support of the ministry at this time. As Pastor Love, we thank God for him sharing with us on today. We want to be a blessing to him. Amen. And so we ask that our ushers would come at this time as we prepare to receive that from them. Baptist doctrine in the classroom. 
uh, two good courses, uh, the Zoom classes. If you are a member of Mount Carmel and you want to be a part of that, I ask that you would get one of these forms that's on the table outside and sign it on the back. We, we will register you. We'll take care of the registration fee. We just want to make sure that you are going to register because they're going to need your email address and things of that sort in order to send you the link uh, if you're going to register for that. But there's, there's flyers on the table outside that looks like this with the two pictures on it. On the other side is the form. If you would fill that form out and put it in my door or leave it for me, I'd appreciate it here at the church. I'd like you to do that as soon as possible. I'm going to reach out uh, tomorrow, this week as well, because we're going to try to uh, wrap this up as far as registration by the 3rd of February is the deadline. But I'm trying to get as many of uh, Mount Carmel, our Sunday school people, that can be a part of this. It's going to be from 9 a.m. until 12.15 on a Saturday, February 11th. And you must have, uh, must be video enabled in order to be a part of it. But uh, you just fill it out, and I need to know how many registrations that we're going to have coming from Mount Carmel. And so I'm asking that those of you who can and will that are part of our church school uh, or want to be a part of the learning process uh, to register for this. The forms, again, are on the table. Please make them make yourselves aware of that and, and complete those. Uh, the Women's Day Committee is not having their uh, day in the kitchen today. They're not going to be uh, there today. Uh, they're going to reschedule that uh, for another time uh, at this particular point in time. I want you to also know that uh, on this coming Tuesday at 7 p.m. is going to be our first teachers meeting since the pandemic shut us down. And so we're asking that many of our teachers can come out. Uh, there's some things we're going to discuss in preparing ourselves for the up and coming uh, start date uh, for church school as well as new membership orientation coming back in person here at the church. But we want to meet first to discuss those things with you. And that's going to be this coming Tuesday here on the first floor at 7 o'clock. So please be mindful of that. Now, these things also on the back of your program uh, as well. So I want you to be mindful of those things as well. Uh, on this coming Thursday, the Grand Rivers is having our regular monthly meeting. And that regular monthly meeting is going to be at Christ Chapel Church in Markham, Illinois. And so uh, we invite those of you uh, that can. The women's session is going to start at 10 o'clock. And, uh, and then they're going to have this. 1.30 session, uh, uh, two classes that we have for people that will go in the daytime. We have two class sessions available at 1.30 to 3.30. And then uh, for that evening, we have uh, two sessions as well starting at 7 o'clock. But again, the information is on the back uh, of your program. We ask that you to be mindful uh, of those things as well as all of the other events uh, that we have scheduled uh, that on the back of your program today. Please be mindful of those things. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, as we prepare to go down uh, from this place on today, a couple of other things I uh, want to uh, ask at this time. Well, first of all, uh, any birthdays this week? You don't want that birthday? That juice? Huh? Oh, it's Ernestine. Okay, her birthday would be, would be this Friday. Okay, we're going to remember that. Uh, that rest in heaven day. Uh, amen. Uh, any other anniversaries or birthdays that are coming up? Okay, we're very good. We're going to be mindful of those as well. Uh, any anniversaries? All right then. Okay, so let's be mindful of those things. Now, for just a few moments, I'd like to ask, uh, as we make sure Andrew's report, who invited someone to church today? You invited someone to church yesterday, right? Where's your fiance? You invited your fiance. Where's your fiance? Oh, no, wait, wait. I knew that, but I wanted to identify. All right. Your fiance has a name? Natasha. Natasha. All right. And what's her, what's her temporary last name right here? Okay, all right. Yeah, that's a temporary. She's going gonna, gonna to change that. Okay, yes. Who'd you invite? Your sister. Your sister has a name. What is it? Okay. All right. Okay. It was all prepared for that announcement, wasn't it? Little, little, little. Y'all missed miss a good one this time. <laughs> okay. But anyway. Okay. Now, uh, uh, anyone else invite someone today? Yes, ma'am. Just... 
Okay, go ahead. Pastor Wilbur, you say? And who else? Oh, God bless you. Okay, okay. Okay, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All right, all right. Very good, very good. We're glad to have all of you that are here sharing with us on today. And we do want you all to remember, the members of Mount Carmel, do not forget that you all have been deputized, and you've been deputized to find uh, those that are wanted, members alive and worshiping. Okay? And we're in the midst of them, and uh, we need, we're looking for them. We want to go get them. Amen. We want to make sure. I want you to know that I had a, con a conversation with Reverend Nina Smith on uh, the other day, yesterday. I got her current phone number. Uh, her address is still the same. Uh, but she fell and again and hurt herself. And so we want to be prayerful for her. But she sounded in great spirits and she sends her love. <coughs> I just want to keep, keep you all up with that. Okay, because I know a lot of people were asking about her and the rest of that. Okay, no problem. Now, as we just I think I covered just about everything here. And so now there's something that I want to share with you as we prepare to go down from this place. Well, one of the things that I want you to know that for those of you that do not know, that uh, uh, one of our members, her brother, was murdered. And uh, so Sister Tony. Hmm? What, what's her last name? Sister Tony Larkin. She joined me about, maybe about just about a month ago. Her brother was murdered and, uh, in Minnesota. And a matter of fact, they're there now uh, with them. Uh, they were trying to work out the details as it relates to where they were going to have the services and things of that sort. But they got that part worked out where they're going to have uh, the uh, service on this coming Wednesday in Minnesota. Uh, however, the family is asking uh, for help, financial help, uh, to help them relocate or bring the body here to Chicago in order to be buried. And so I'm asking that the members of Mount Carmel, those of you that can and will, to bring a best offering on next Sunday so that we can collect an offering for that family so that we can make sure that the company that's going to be bringing uh, the uh, the deceased uh, will get what they need uh, from us, and we'll do our part to help out. And so we're asking those who can and will uh, to please bring a special love offering uh, for the family uh, on next Sunday. We'll collect that up, and then we'll make sure that we find out the company and which we ought to write the check out to, and that's what we will do. Amen. Amen. Now, one last thing I want to share with you now. On this past Friday evening, the video recording was played showing the actions that happened in Memphis at the traffic stop of Mr. Tyree Nichols. I must say that what was shown was extreme hands-on brutality by law enforcement officers. Now, while I may not be trained in the skill or the technique of necessary hands-on hands enforcement or restraint. I do know brutality when I see it. I saw brutality in 1991 with Mr. Rodney King. And unfortunately, I saw it again in 2023 with Mr. Tyree Nichols. Now, I can do more than empathize with the family I can sympathize with the family because I've had an uncle and a cousin to be brutally beaten to death by people that they thought they could trust. And so I understand what this family is experiencing, especially since it was caught on camera. But I'm also experiencing the sympathy for the many families to which this has happened to that wasn't caught on camera. And I'm disturbed about the continuing double standards regarding black lives in this country. Now, don't get me wrong, brothers and sisters. Wrong is wrong, no matter who the perpetrator may be. But isn't it interesting that the silence of the police unions and the silence of the political GOP is deafening? I even 
trying to find something on Fox Major News Network to my disappointment. I'm not talking about just the news aspect of it, but I'm talking about how they would protect certain people when it happened under another life. Now, I understand that we can argue about who needs to hear the message Black Lives Matter. But does black, does black people need to hear the message? Yes. Yeah. But white people need to hear it too. Brown people need to hear it too. And for those people that are saying that, why say black lives matter? Why don't you just say all lives matter? All lives. We say black lives matter because, isn't it interesting, when blacks kill blacks, it's illegal. But when whites kill blacks, there's always an excuse and a reason. And true enough, black on black crime doesn't give, uh, open the door for other crimes to be done to black people. It's important for us to understand this. I just want you to know black lives do not. And we got to make sure that our people understand that. But brothers and sisters, we got to make sure that everybody else on the planet understands that. Okay? Because it's black lives that get hung from the trees. It's black lives that get pulled out. It's, we've seen it. We've seen it too many times. Okay? Now, while I agree with Attorney Trump, there is now a blueprint available to deal with the unlawful actions of law enforcement when law enforcement gets out of control. But I must say, I'm going to have to wait and see like the rest of us as we await the outcome. Because isn't it interesting? Did you notice how fast those guys got arrested? How fast, how quick those guys got indicted? Brothers and sisters, that's not an accident. We've seen it too many times the other way around. Now, as families in the community of our country experience great pain during this time, while this may be a time for protest, it is not a time for violence, or destruction, or more death. We should not stop praying, because prayer works. We will not stop speaking. We will not stop voting. We will not stop shutting down. And we will not stop marching, because that works also. We will not stop hoping, because that's what keeps us going. Our hopes and prayers are with the Nichols family, and indeed, all families touched by the tragedies of our society. Yeah. That's my two cents. Yeah. At this time, we're going to prepare to go down from this place. Let us go.